Hello and welcome to our options video. Obviously we would normally be inviting you into school but we can't do that this year because of Covid. However, what I think we've put together is an amazing display of all the things that we do at Graham School which will give your children the opportunity to study amazing subjects. I'm so proud of the amazing range of options that we have at our school. Our curriculum is truly broad and balanced and really offers something for every single child. This process is really important and we want your children to be able to choose their GCSE courses that will help them to progress to their future and the next stage of whatever they want to do, whether that's applying to a high-powered university or getting an apprenticeship in a local company. It's our job to prepare them for that next step. Year 8 is an important time and we're looking forward to making these choices with your children. Today you've got the opportunity to see some films about the process, about the subjects and about how we'll work with you in the coming months to make it a successful pr process. Please, if you've got any questions about anything at all, don't hesitate to ask us, email us, contact us. We want the cho choices to be correct for your children and I look forward to welcoming them back into Year 9 to study their chosen subjects and to getting the success that they deserve. We truly believe that the children at Graham are growing at Graham and we want to work together as Team Graham to make sure that they're successful. I hope you enjoy our films, I hope you get all the information that you need, and if you don't, please contact us. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you. Good evening everybody. Um, this is a presentation regarding the options process for current year 8 at Graham School. Under normal circumstances we would all be together tonight discussing this and there'd be lots of opportunity for you to talk to the teachers and things. Unfortunately those things can't be happening at the moment but we're hoping that this presentation plus lots of links that are going to be onto the school website for you to have a look at are going to help you and your child to start to make decisions around the options process that is coming up for them. So I'd just like to start by overviewing what's going to happen this evening. So I'm going to do a short presentation for you around the options process, how it will work, um, what will be happening over the next few weeks. There will be opportunities for you to ask questions. Um, these will come mainly via emails, but then there will also be some other opportunities that I will outline for you later on about how you can get in touch with us if you would like to. Uh, Mr Moore, the Head of Year 8, is also going to be talking to you about some tips and handy hints for choosing the subjects um, and he'll be speaking to you a little bit later on. After the presentation there will be the opportunity for you to have a look at lots of short videos that the teachers in the subjects have put together for you so that you can hopefully get a good idea of the content of the courses. So don't worry about making decisions just right now. There will be chances for you to talk to us and there will be chances for you to amend your choices later on if you decide that perhaps um, you haven't made a wise choice at the moment. Okay, so how does the options process work then? We are dictated by the Department of Education that every student has to do what are called the compulsory subjects. I'm sure none of them will be a surprise to any of you, but all of our students must continue with GCSE Maths, GCSE English, both Language and Literature, and GCSE Science. Those are the compulsory subjects that everybody must do. As well as that, all of our students follow a course that we call Philosophy and Ethics, which includes all the extra things that uh, the DfE require us to do, including careers guidance, which becomes very important during the latter stages of secondary education. Our students have the opportunity to take between 8 and 11 GCSEs in total, that's including the compulsory subjects. We run two main areas of courses. We run what are called GCSEs, but we also run some other courses which are non-GCSEs, which I'd like to speak to you about. 
The GCSEs are generally speaking the more traditional courses. They are examined through formal written exams. Some of them have coursework elements to them but not all of them. All of these subjects are graded on what is a scale running from 1 up to 9, grade 9 being the highest. The other courses that we run, including BTECs and some of the vocational courses, these ones tend to be geared more towards a specific career um, or specific kind of occupation. These are often more practical based subjects and have a greater emphasis on coursework than the GCSEs do. These are graded on a pass, merit and distinction level. The main thing that I really must emphasise to you though please is both all types of courses have exactly the same merit whether you are applying to colleges, to sixth form or to university in the future. Every course we run has equal merit when it comes to those applications in the future. The government also have something else called the English Baccalaureate, which I need to sort of enlighten you about. It is a very strong recommendation that students continue with at least one, what they call EBAC, which stands for English Baccalaureate course, up until GCSE. We run a large suite of these English Baccalaureate courses and every one of our students is required to choose at least one of these subjects. The ones we offer are GCSE Geography, GCSE History, GCSE Spanish, GCSE French, GCSE German, GCSE Computer Science and GCSE Separate Sciences. So every student has to cover one, it can be more than one, but they must do one of that choice of subjects. We've also, in recent years, opened up a lot more courses through our now trust engagement with George Pinder School. We are now able to offer additional courses because we are now working alongside George Pinder School. There are information on those courses for you on the videos that are available this evening, so please do look at those ones as well. If you want to know more details about how the George Pinder courses work, then we will um, add that information in for you if that is relevant to you. I now need to speak to you about what we call the pathways. There are four pathways that we run at Graham School and your son or daughter will have been told which pathway we believe is recommended for them. Now this is a recommendation, this is not set in stone, this is what we believe would be the right combination of courses for your son or daughter. If your child has been given a pathway which they are not happy with, then we are happy to have that conversation with them um, and to see if we can support them and help them to make the wisest choice possible. The four pathways are called enhanced, standard, supported and tailored. Hopefully you can see those now. The enhanced pathway gives what is called the full EBAC qualification. Basically, they have to study either geography or history and a modern foreign language. They then have two other choices on top of that. This course is really designed for those who are aspiring to the highest level of university in the future. The Russell Group Universities, which comprises of the highest achieving universities in the country, look for this EBAC qualification on their application when people are applying to study at their establishments. 
If you know that you would aspire to go to such a place, then you need to give serious consideration to the enhanced pathway. The second pathway is what we call the standard pathway. For this one, you need to select one EBAC subject plus three others. The EBAC subject can be any of the ones I mentioned earlier. The details are all listed in the options booklet and then three other subjects of your choice. The supported pathway is designed for students who need a little bit of extra time on their English and their Maths at GCSE. These students have extra English and extra Maths in their timetable. They then do an EVAC subject of their choice and two more options. Lastly, we have something called the tailored pathway. This one is supportive for the students who need a more bespoke curriculum. These students will do one NEBAC subject and two other option choices. And in addition, the tailored students will do what is called the ASDAN Life Skills course. This course is designed to help students with life experiences, planning, organising, thinking things through, decision making processes and that is all catered for in the ASDAN Life Skills course. As I said at the beginning of this slide, the, the pathways have been given to the students as a recommendation, but they are a recommendation. If you wish to discuss the pathway in more detail, then please do contact us. We've also shown the students, and you hopefully will have seen yourselves, the options forms. When it comes to filling in these options forms, it's crucial that they are done in order of preference, please. So they must say what is the student's first, second, third choice in order, if that is relevant. They also have two reserved choices that they have to make. Please make sure that your son or daughter includes their reserved choices. We don't always need to use them, but we do use them fairly frequently, so you will need to make sure they are there, please. I'll come back to that in a little bit as well. Right, on the screen now, you can see all of the subjects that we offer. We have a huge array of subjects for our year nines to choose from, the largest selection in any secondary school, certainly that I've ever seen. The subjects that are in the blue boxes are the courses that we run at Graham School. The ones in the orange boxes are the ones that we run at George Pinder School and our students are able to access those as well. You will find information on the website this evening around all of those subjects. The information is also in the options booklet that you will have received in the post. So there is hopefully lots of ways that you can find out the information around those courses. It's really important that I emphasise now the dates and the process that will happen over the coming weeks. You should, in the month of February, have already received a report that came home about your son or daughter and their progress in the subjects that they are studying at the moment. You should have also received, again in the post, an options booklet and the relevant options forms for your son or daughter. If any of those have not made it to you, then you need to let us know please and we will make sure that that is sorted out. Obviously this evening you've been listening to my presentation and you will have access to the videos on the website around the subjects. Coming up next week we have what would have been the Year 8 Parents Evening. Now for obvious reasons that will be a remote event However, you will be sent home some detailed reports from your current subject teachers around how your son or daughter is doing at present. 
We would normally be running a taster day for the students in year eight where they would have the opportunity to visit some of the lessons that they have never been able to access before. Again, for obvious reasons, we're not sure whether this is going to be able to happen or not. If we can, we will run that event for them and they will have the opportunity to go to a selection of new subjects that they've not studied to help them make a better decision. The deadline for the options forms is the 26th of March. I please do not want to have the options forms in until the students have had a good chance to view the videos, to have a good think, to hopefully have some conversations with people around the decisions that they're making. So when they hand their forms in, hopefully that is their decision. What we then do is we put together everybody's choices and if there are any issues, we will come back to the students before the end of the summer term. So, the big question, lots of parents are bound to be thinking this, lots of parents ask me this every year, will my child get their choices? We will, and we always do, endeavour to give all of our students their first choices. However, due to the sheer number of combinations of subjects that we have available, we cannot guarantee it. Hence, this is why we ask students for reserve choices. For the vast majority of students, they will get their courses that they have asked for. However, there will be a few who we need to come back to and have conversations around their reserves. You should or you will receive a letter which confirms the options for your son or daughter during the summer term of this academic year. Before we break up for the summer, they will definitely know what courses they are starting in September. If you've got any issues or concerns, if students make choices and then change their mind, yeah, then please make sure that people come and talk to me, whether that's the student or whether it's the parents, it's absolutely fine either way. Okay, I know I've thrown lots and lots of information at people there. Please bear in mind, obviously, this is a video. You can go back to the beginning. You can start again, you can pause at different points. I would advise that you watch with the um, options booklet and the options forms in front of you. And please don't hesitate to get in touch should you need to ask anything. I'm going to hand over to Mr Moore, the Head of Year 8. He's going to be speaking to you about advice and guidance on making choices. And at the end of his presentation, there are some key email addresses which you might want to look at if you've had any questions that have sprung to mind so far. Okay, thank you very much. I've just got a few bits of advice that I want to give to you to make the process as smooth as possible. So number one, for me, don't choose what subject or what subject you're amazing at if you don't like it. Choose what you enjoy. Choose a subject you enjoy because over time, even if you're really good at a subject and you don't enjoy it, you may begin to resent it. So only choose what you enjoy, in my opinion. Of course, it's just my opinions. Don't choose a subject based on the teacher. You might not get that teacher, that teacher might not stay for that much longer, we don't know. We can't predict these things, so only choose on based on the subject matter, not on the teacher, and definitely not what your friends are doing. Don't choose because your pals are taking it, oh, I'll get in the same class as them, because you might not. So there, the three main things for me there are, choose what you enjoy, don't choose a subject based on the teacher or your pals, choose it because you enjoy it, and make it about you, because this is your future. Also, take into consideration things like previous reports. So, has it gone well in that particular subject? And then couple that again with the fact if you enjoy it. Now, of course, there are subjects that you're going to do that are new. Photography, for example, film studies, psychology. They're all brand new subjects you've not done in year eight or year seven. So, we'll give you some taster days and some 
sort of starter sessions on those subjects to give you an idea, a flavour for them. I recommend you give that a really good go and be honest about how you feel about it and try your best in those subjects and then of course it's a career path. Do you want to be a lawyer? Do you want to be a policeman? Think about what those career paths require and then think about right okay I'll take the subjects that require or do some research and I'll take those subjects that get me to that end goal. But if you're not sure, you think, oh, I don't know what I want to be, then keep your subjects quite open, quite broad. And in that way, you can leave school with more options. It wouldn't be just a case of thinking, I'm going to be a lawyer, right, I'll take psychology, I'll take triple science and English, and things like that, that, that work for the lawyer. If you're not sure, keep it broad, keep it open. And therefore, you'll have more options when you leave because again at A-level or beyond in college there are new subjects appear then as well so it might be you try something brand new after, after school. So yeah your recent reports, the requirements to get on that course too, some courses require you to be at a certain level so psychology for example I believe you have to have a level 5 targeted science to access psychology so that's something you need to take on board if it is indeed your chosen path. Um, other than that, they are my main bits of advice. You're going to be doing that course for three years, so you have to think you're going to enjoy it. I would love for you to consider the workload for each course. Uh, I teach photography, and in the past, people have taken my course thinking it's a piece of cake. And it's not. There's a big, significant workload in there, as there is with every single subject. Don't take a course thinking it'll be easy. Take a course because, again, you enjoy it and you're aware that all courses have significant workload. Your GCSE students now, you're heading towards this, you've got to be ready to do the amount of work that's accepted or expected of you. So yeah, workload is absolutely paramount. Some subjects are more exam based, some are more coursework based. You have to make sure, please, that you consider those. Don't go into this without some research. Don't go into it blindly. You're studying this for the next three years. It's a long time, long have you been here so far. So you've got to do what you enjoy, you've got to do what's right for you, you're right for your career, and then also making sure, please make sure you take advice from do what you enjoy, not what your friends are taking, not based on the teacher, because all that can change. I wish you the best of luck with your choices year eight. And any questions, anything at all, myself and Miss Shires are here to answer any questions you have, both in person and through email. Thank you very much.